first off, can you just talk a little bit about working with Jamie and how you how it feels having a woman in the role of you know pinhead priest, whatever we want to call her, because I she's so great. <laughs> yeah, I mean she was incredible. I feel like that it was always well the iconic pinhead is finally being played by a woman and um that is definitely inspired by the way that barker described her in the original novella you know the, yeah. it, he said like the character had um the light and breathy voice of an excited girl so i feel like we're finally getting our female pinhead and she killed it she's yeah. so good she's so <laughs> Like, like look, look at her. <laughs> oh my God. Amazing. Yeah, nice background. <laughs> yeah. And for you, you know, were there concerns about stepping into a beloved franchise, even though, you know, it is one I think everyone can kind of admit went off the rails at a certain point in the continuity? <laughs> um, I think that it's too iconic to replicate. And it's not, we weren't trying to replicate it. We were just trying to reinvent it but not even reinvent it it's really just same world same universe new story and I feel and hope that OG fans will understand that because if you've seen all the movies then you know like the story it, it changes up so it's considerably not a, it's a, <laughs> yeah it's a reinvention it's just a, it's Hellraiser 11 you I'm know? not mad at it as someone who has just watched all of them for the first like all the later ones for the first time i'm glad yeah. to see this kind of take it back to where it was before <laughs> and for you can you talk a little bit about you know no spoilers on your character's fate but how does it feel you know entering kind of scream queen final girl territory and just kind of stepping into that kind of role that is so funny someone asked me that earlier too and i was like wow, i haven't even thought about that i wouldn't <laughs> say that i'm like i feel like i didn't really come I like do that that well because I feel like to be a scream queen you got to get a, a good scream in there and I think I could have done a better job at that <laughs> but um you know those are big shoes to fill so I, I hope that pe all I hope is that is that people like it and they don't hate me after watching this movie <laughs> I don't think that will be the case. <laughs> and can you, I know you, uh, during the press conference, you talked a little bit about your initial reactions to seeing the Cenobites on set, but how was it actually like interacting with them when it did come time to be like up close and personal for some of those scenes that you have? Um, it was so cool. It was amazing. <laughs> I'd say the coolest and funnest low Cenobite encounter was with Jason in the date mini chase scene and oh, Jason good. is the chatterer but that's all I'm yep. gonna say I don't want to give but, anything that's fine <laughs> <laughs> and I guess what were the kind of horror movies do or if if you were drawn to horror movies you know growing up were there some that you were you considered your favorite I think my favorite one was always The Fly. Did you ever see The Fly? Ooh, yeah, good choice. <laughs> fly and oh, uh, the first one that that really stuck with me was The Thing. Excellent choices, both of them. The Thing <laughs> freaked me out and I just always remember being like how am I going to know if there's an alien inside of me if I don't have any metal in my mouth? Like <laughs> not about that. And, and even now I'm still like happy that I have like a permanent retainer at my bottom. <laughs> Some proof. Like, if I am like possessed by an alien or a thing, whatever, they're going to have to knock out my teeth and then I'll know. <laughs> we will make sure everyone knows you are still human. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your time today. Have a great Thank one. You. I love this movie. Nice to meet you.